Number one, the Dam Buster's dog, now referred to as Digger, because his real name is considered offensive. This black Labrador belonged to Wing Commander Guy Gibson of the British Royal Air Force and served as the mascot for the 617th Squadron. The squadron is famous for its nighttime raid on three dams in Germany and its success was immortalized in the 1954 film The Dam Busters. However, on the night of the raid, Digger was hit by a car outside the base and killed. Worried it was a bad omen, Gibson ordered that the death be kept a secret and that his dog be buried outside of his office at midnight. The dog's name was even used as a code word when Germany's dams were breached during the famous mission. Today, some people believe that Digger still haunts the area. In fact, a photograph taken during the 1980s launched an investigation into paranormal activity around the base. The picture shows a black Labrador sitting beside a school group visiting the Dam Busters Memorial. The photographer claims the dog appeared just as the photo was about to be taken and refused to be shooed away. Once he snapped the picture, the dog disappeared and was never seen again. Ghost hunters who have visited the base say they're convinced that the spirit of Digger still lingers by his grave and his master's memorial. They cite cold spots that measure roughly the size of a dog, as well as late night growls witnesses have heard outside Gibson's former office. Number 2 One of the oldest restaurants in Charleston, South Carolina is haunted by a small pooch named Pugin. When the large Victorian house was converted into a restaurant in 1976, the owners left their dog behind and Pugin, a neighborhood fixture, set up camp on the porch he'd always called home. The friendly pup greeted diners and it was decided to name the restaurant Pugin's Porch after its canine mascot. When Pugin died in 1979, he was buried beside his porch. And today, employees often report seeing the dog napping in his favorite spot. Some diners even claim they felt Pugin's ghost brush against their legs as he searches for table scraps. Number 3 Local folklore says that this supernatural hound has been haunting the hanging hills of Connecticut near Hubbard Park for more than a century. The small black dog is described as friendly, but it's said to make no sound and leave no footprints. According to the legend, to see the black dog the first time results in joy, while a second sighting results in misfortune. Seeing the dog a third time is said to be a death omen, and at least six deaths had been blamed on the dog. One of the first accounts of the Hanging Hills dog was written by geologist W. H. C. Pynchon and appeared in Connecticut Quarterly in 1898. According to his story, he was conducting research on a cliff with fellow geologist Herbert Marshall in 1891 when they both saw the dog. Pynchon had seen the dog before, while Marshall 
had seen the dog twice before, but didn't believe in the legend. Shortly after encountering the pooch, Marshall slipped on ice and fell to his death. Sightings of the black dog continue today. Number 4 The Belmont Hillsboro neighborhood in Nashville is said to be haunted by the friendly spirit of a boxer named Preston. According to local stories, the dog was accompanying a group of trick-or-treaters on Halloween more than 50 years ago when a 13-year-old girl spotted her 7-year-old brother picking up candy he dropped in the road. A car was speeding down the street towards him, so the girl darted into the road to save him, but Preston got there first. The boxer knocked the boy from the car's path and took the brunt of the hit, which threw the dog into a nearby yard. The girl's brother was unharmed, so she went to look for Preston, but his body was never found. Since then, each Halloween, local children have reported being gently bumped onto the sidewalk when they step into the road. Today, that teenage girl is all grown up and still lives in the Belmont Hillsboro neighborhood. It's said that she places a dog biscuit on her front porch every Halloween as a gift to the dog who died to save her brother. Number 5 For more than 150 years, People have reported seeing a large, white dog in the Ebenezer Church Cemetery in Newbury, South Carolina, as well as along the five-mile stretch of Buncombe Road that runs from Newbury to Goshen Hill. Witnesses say the dog appears suddenly beside your vehicle, and if you stop, it will step in front of your car, throw its head back, and howl. According to one legend, the dog's master was buried in the old cemetery, and the dog lay on his grave until it died of starvation. However, other people believe in a much more grisly tale. The second, more popular story is that the dog was the companion of a traveling salesman more than a century ago. While the salesman was in Goshen Hill, a townsperson was murdered and the salesman was the prime suspect. After an unfair trial, the man was found guilty and hanged from a tree where the white dog stood guard over his master's corpse. Weeks later, both the dog and the body disappeared, and those involved in the salesman's lynching were attacked by the white dog, one by one. Those who survived the dog's bites reported that the animal didn't appear until they passed by the tree where the salesman had been hanged. Number 6 One night, I was babysitting for some of my mother's friends. I've watched their children many times before and had never had anything strange happen there. Although, all of the children claimed the house was haunted by the spirit of a man named Henry and a native. While we were upstairs in the playroom, the curtains started to move so I thought the window must not have been shut all the way. I pulled the curtain back and saw that the window was shut tight. I looked down and saw a small, white dog with brown and black spots on it. This didn't strike me as odd 
because I knew they had a dog, but I thought he was kept out back. I just dropped the curtain and went back to playing with the children. When their parents got home, I told their father that I thought their dog was cute. He asked, What dog? I thought he was just being silly, so I said, Your dog, duh, and told him where I saw it. His face grew very serious, and he asked me what the dog looked like. After describing it, he simply said, we don't have a dog anymore because the one you just described got hit by a car two weeks ago. Number seven. My house has been haunted ever since my mom was young. My sister and I used to play this game called, if you touch the floor, you're an alligator. We would play this game all the time, and two of the times I saw this guy outside of my window mowing the lawn. I went to tell my mom that someone was mowing the yard, but she didn't believe me. So I got my other sisters and told them, which they saw the same thing as I did. He was an old guy with a baseball hat. He then smiled at us and waved his hand. We all looked at each other, looked back to the man, and he was gone. We also have a dog that haunts our house. Late at night, you could feel the dog scratching at your bed, and if you looked down, nothing would be there. When I was younger, I had to go into the kitchen to pour my mom a glass of coke, and then this big wind came and was dragging me. I started to cry and scream, so my mom and sisters came to see what was going on and found me sitting in the middle of the floor. It was pretty scary. My sisters slept in our living room one night, and they both sat up at the same time and saw a black figure walking out of mom's room and into the living room and then into the kitchen. Then, there was another time where I would wake up and couldn't move. It wasn't like sleep paralysis, but rather like someone was holding me down and wouldn't let me up. Sometimes, the ghost would play tricks on you. They would sound like someone you know, except that person wouldn't be home. I remember one time when I stayed at home from school, I would hear my sisters talking and I would yell to my mom, is everyone home or something? And she told me that they were still at school. We also would see a tail under the bed that looked just like my dog's tail, but it wasn't her tail because she would be in the bed with us. We have seen a lot of unusual things happen to us in that home and these are just a few of the things that we have seen. Number 8 I've been living in my house all my life. Well, I should say for 17 years now. Our house is over 100 years old, and this area was bombed quite badly during World War II. My mother and sister have always been able to sense ghosts. On our landing, there is an out washing machine, but it used to be an old washing cupboard. The bathroom door is right next to it, and my sister has said that she has seen a faint outline of a person standing there. My mother says she has also felt something there. I've only heard noises up there. My sister says she believes it to be an old lady from the outline of her, and my mom says that she feels that it all is well, so we nicknamed her Mrs. Cooksley. That was the old lady that lived and died in this house. Recently, I have seen what can only be described as a little black 
dog out of the corner of my eye. I mentioned this to my mom, and she said she has seen it as well run out from under the stairs. When I have friends over to sleep, they have also said that they have seen a dark shadow walk from the bottom of the stairs and out through the kitchen. The other day, I was lying in bed with the door shut, and suddenly, I heard as if someone had kicked the door. So I shot up to open the door, and nothing was there. I went downstairs, and everyone was in the front room, and no one had left that room for about an hour. Odd things go missing in the bedrooms, and as I walk out of the bathroom, I always get a cold rush come over me.